The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Dorma Pramet online tra training series for uh, year 2019. Uh, this is our first session of this year. As uh, all the other ones, you can find the, the older ones on the YouTube channel of Dorma Pramet. And uh, without further ado, uh, we'll, we have uh, Russell Reinhardt, National Sales Manager, uh, here well, with me, and uh, we will be talking about uh, the Riot Drill and TAP uh, selection. Okay, hey, thanks, Martin. Um, this uh, over the next 20 minutes, uh, I'm going to talk about how tapping can help improve productivity and reduce scrap. Uh, but in 20 minutes, you can't make people into tapping experts. And so, what my plan is is to go through some material that hopefully can give you some insights as to how to best select a tap for your uh, tapping operation. And since this is our first program for the year, uh, I would like to, I chose tapping as our topic um, because tapping is extremely prevalent in uh, the manufacturing from small machine shops all the way up to the large shops. You can find hand taps, you can see tapping being used in drill presses or robo, uh, robo tapping machines, CNC's, transfer lines, and even uh, specialty equipment. So the it's such a broadly used application in the market. It also has uh, great influences uh, in the manufacturing processes itself. Nearly every component that is produced has a tapped uh, hole in it. Uh, and most times the tapping process is actually completed at the end of the production process. So that puts it where you run through a lot of man hours, a lot of machine time uh, to get to where the tap is being used. And if the tap produces an out of tolerance hole or if the tap breaks, it can create um, scrap. And scrap uh, is very costly because you lose the value of the material, you lose the uh, value of all the man hours and the machine time that was put into that component all the way up to that point. Uh, or some companies will try to rework it, which is like a secondary operation. They'll take the component away. They'll try to extract a broken tap or they'll try to weld up a hole and retap it. And this adds a lot of man hours, a lot of time to the production of a component, and it can be extremely costly. Uh, most companies will select their taps based upon either a high degree of security or uh, productivity. And it basically comes down, and this is, this is uh, very simplified. Manufacturers can choose multi-application taps uh, that will give them a high degree of stability these taps run very well in insecure or less than ideal manufacturing conditions. Uh, the taps, uh, though, will run much slower. Their tool life is limited. And with limited tool life means that you're changing the tap more often. And uh, if the machine is shut down to replace the tools, you're losing productivity out of that machine. So you might gain a high degree of security where the tap isn't going to break in the hole, but you lose a lot of machine time uh, by increasing the number of tool changes and then also increasing costs because you're utilizing more taps uh, in the production process. Or a company can choose a material specific tap or a high performance tap and these taps are going to produce a very high quality hole. They're going to produce that hole, uh, that tap or that thread very um, fast. They can run at much higher speeds. You get longer tool life. You don't have to change out the tap as often. But in less than ideal conditions, you can often see the tap break. Um, and if it breaks off in the hole, as I just stated, uh, it can be very costly scrapping out the entire component uh, on that. So when that happens, generally manufacturers will start to move more towards the uh, slower, multi-application, tougher taps in the, in the process. Now, as I said, I'm not going to make everybody a tapping expert as we work through this presentation, but 
what I hope to do is to give you the insights that you would need to be able to properly select a, the right tap for the job. And there are seven primary criteria that you need to uh, establish in before you can select the right tap for the job. And I've got, I'll go through each one of these, um, starting with the materials. Uh, understanding the material that you're going to be tapping is critical. Many high performance taps are designed for material uh, specifically, like specifically for steel or specifically for stainless. And they do require different design changes in the tap to handle the different types of material. Uh, the uh, also you need to understand is the tap being used in more than just one material uh, some manufacturing facilities that run small batch runs they may be running a stainless steel component that uses say a quarter 20 tap and then uh, after about 10 or 15 pieces they might switch over to a stainless steel or a heat resistant super alloy and if that's the case then it's it's you need to understand that they're going to be utilizing the tap in multi materials so you can get high performance taps for multi material designs uh, but uh, if you don't if you don't diagnose that early uh, then you can go back to having a problem where you're running the wrong style tap in the wrong material you need to understand the, the hole type. Is it a blind hole? Um, is it a blind hole, but they're going to be tapping to the bottom? They're going to be putting the, the threads all the way to the bottom of the hole. Is there obstructions in, in the hole itself? Uh, sometimes this can be stacked material. It can be uh, by materials. Uh, um, so if, you, uh, if you're going to be running into something, an obstruction in there, uh, you need to be running the right tap for that as well. And then through holes as well. Your tap selection process or the tap geometry itself uh, is also needs to be known. If it's a through hole, uh, you may want a tap that creates a long stringy chip that is fed down through the bottom of the hole. That would be ideal for the manufacturing process. Uh, if, uh, if you want the, the chip to be long and stringy and fed back out the top of the hole, there's tap designs for that. Uh, if you want to take and create short chips that are fed out of the hole, uh, you'd use the straight flute. And then another tap that I'm not going to get into a lot in this process is called uh, thread forming. And this is where uh, a drilled hole a drilled hole has a tap that uses pressure and forming to create the thread design in the hole. Also extremely important is you got to understand the tap tolerances. What is the percentage of thread that you're going to have? What's the H limits that you'll have in there? Um, these, many times you'll find on the drawings the, the tap tolerances are very tight and they require a very specific design. And so if you understand this, if you can see this on the, the, the print itself, it's going to take and help you select the optimal tap for that job. And then also the, uh, the tap tolerances are also going to help you in picking what is probably the most important part of tapping and that is selecting the right drill. If you don't you if you're not utilizing the right drill in the operation, uh, it can create uh, out of tolerance threads. Even though you have the right tap for the job, if the hole is not produced correctly, then you can take and scrap a component, you can create out of tolerance threads. So you really need to take into consideration here as well the materials that you're utilizing. Um, how is the drill entering the component? Is it, uh, is it on a flat surface? Is it offset? Is it uh, concave, convex? Um, what's the type of machine that you're running? Uh, do you need coolant through? Is it a horizontal machine, vertical? Uh, how are the chips going to be evacuated? Uh, all of this has to take, be taken into consideration when you're selecting the drills. And then drills come in a multitude of different styles as well. Um, you have high-speed steel drills and cobalt drills. Uh, these can uh, um, produce um, uh, high-quality holes, but uh, not as high-quality as, say, you would with a, a solid carbide drill. 
uh, or a coolant through solid carbide drill. And then on occasion in the market, we do see uh, braised tip carbide drills. So I would tell you that um, one of the most important things to producing a high quality thread, uh, maximizing your productivity, it starts with the hole. So if you're looking at optimizing a tapping operation, you really need to take a look at the drilling operation uh, to maximize and optimize that as well. But all of this is also influenced uh, by the tool holders. In many shops, you will see that people ignore what you're putting the tools in. Uh, if the tool holders are old, or worn out, um, they can cause problems in the tapping operation. They can create a bad thread. So even if you're using the right drill, you're using the right speeds and feeds, you're utilizing the right tap, but the tool holder is old and worn out, it can also take and create problems inside that, uh, that machine to create a, a good hole and a good thread. So you want to know with the tool holders, are you utilizing tension compression uh, on the machine? Does the machine require rigid tapping? Are you utilizing a, a collet holder uh, like a, a, or bills adapters or uh, um, how is it, uh, how clean or um, how worn out is the tool, especially if you're utilizing a bills adapter, many of those over time can get very loose and uh, the tap can actually move around, uh, which uh, can also cause some tap breakage as well. So if you take and look at, if you look at these seven different things and you understand these uh, and you can gather this information, workpiece material, um, what type of hole, are you trying to thread um, the thread specifications themselves, as well as the accuracy of the hole? So your thread tolerances, uh, the pre-drilled hole, is it the right hole, the right diameter? Uh, what kind of machine are you utilizing this on so that you can take and utilize the right tool holding, whether it be rigid tapping or tension compression? And then if you can gather all that information up, uh, then you can reach out to your local Domer Promet specialist and they can take that information and turn it into a solid recommendation to optimize your, uh, your tapping performance and productivity. That's about it. I guess now we'll open it up uh, for any questions. So if there are any questions, you can write it now or, or send, it, uh, uh, send it later to, uh, through the email or contact Domer Promet. Uh, if you would like to get a deeper in the in a, in a tapping operations, uh, go to Domer Promet YouTube channel, uh, where we have uh, the, the the one of the trainings from last year, where we talk more about the features, benefits, and details uh, about uh, about uh, the, the, the threading itself. Uh, so, thank you for your uh, uh, thank you for participating uh, today on our webinar, and uh, we'll be talking to you again. Uh, by the end of February. Uh, so far, uh, no questions. So we'll probably close here and we'll be happy to uh, uh, talking to you in one month from now. Uh, thank you and uh, have a, a great day. Bye. Okay, I'm glad I could help.